Thank you, sir. Good evening. Our scripture tonight, we'll be coming from uh, Mark chapter 7, starting in verse 14. I will be reading from the New Living Translation. Again, Mark chapter 7, starting at verse 14. And it reads, Then Jesus called to the crowd to come and hear. All of you listen, he said, and, he, and try to understand. It's not what goes into the body that defiles you. You are defiled by what comes from your heart. Then Jesus went into a house to get away from the crowd. And his disciples asked him what he meant by the parable he had just used. Don't you understand either? He asked, can you see that the food you put into your body cannot defile you? Food does not go into the heart, but only pass through the stomach and then goes into the sewer. By saying this, he declared that every kind of food is acceptable in God's eyes. And, he, and then he said, then he added, it is what comes from inside that defiles you. From, for from within, out of a person's heart, comes evil thoughts, sexual immoralities, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit, lustful, desires, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. And all these vile things come from within. They are what defile you. And I read Mark chapter 7, 14 through 23. May the Lord continue to bless the hearers and doers of his most holy word. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Father, we just want to thank you for this afternoon, this evening. Thank you for allowing us to come out to the house of worship once again, Lord. Dear Lord, we are looking for another powerful word from on high. Dear Lord, we are just seeking you, your word, each and every day of our lives, Lord. And we want to use it and share. Dear Lord, we want to thank you for this church home that we have here, Lord. Please bless our pastor, his family. Bless all the members that uh, that's a part of this body, Lord. Bless all the churches that's open in your name, Lord. Please, a special blessing for our instructor tonight, uh, Mr. Lee, his family. Uh, dear Lord, we just want you to uh, give him what you have for him on tonight and uh, to bless him as you... Uh, on how bless us each and every day, Lord. And again, we just want to thank you for the many blessings. And uh, definitely, please forgive us our many sins, Lord. And we just want to thank you what, what you did over 2,000 years on, on this week, Lord. And we just want to continue to uh, uh, just uh, understand what you did, how important it was dying on the cross. But you just didn't die on the cross. You rose up on the third day with all power. So when you got up, we got up, Lord. And we just want to thank you again. In your son Jesus' name we say, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Deacon Crutcher. I'm satisfied with Jesus. I'm satisfied with Jesus. I'm satisfied with Jesus in my heart. Mm -hmm. I'm satisfied with Jesus. I'm satisfied with Jesus. I'm satisfied with Jesus in my heart. Well, uh, you can't make me doubt him. Uh, you can't make me doubt him. Uh, you can't make me doubt him in my heart. You can't make me doubt him. Uh, you can't make me doubt him. Uh, you can't make me doubt him in my heart. Jesus, 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 
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus in my heart. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus in my heart. Amen. Anybody satisfied with Jesus? I'm satisfied with Jesus. Lord had me thinking about that. I was asking the Lord, what, 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 what song can we sing? And, you know, we were thinking about this week. Anybody know what this week is? What is this week in the life of the church? What's coming up on Sunday? The resurrection of Jesus. Resurrection Sunday. We, 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 we used to call it Passover. Well, in the, in the, in the Greek, in Acts, they mentioned Easter. But Easter is a, a Greek word, or it translated from the Greek, but it means Passover. And the Passover comes from Exodus, you know, when they put the blood on the lentils and the doorposts to where the Lord, the death angel, passed over all of the firstborn, and everybody in Israel was safe. But those who didn't follow the Lord, their firstborn was taken out. So you fast forward through the years, and when you look at Matthew 21 and the following synoptic gospels, uh, Mark and Luke, John is not synoptic. He wrote to everybody. Matthew 21 starts Holy Week. He came, he came riding in on what? This, this, this pop quiz. He came riding in on what on Sunday? A donkey. Somebody said a chariot. No, we, we are. <laughs> Jesus came riding in on a donkey. And so in Holy Week, this is, this is considered Sunday, this past Sunday, pastor preached, what was pastor's sermon on Sunday? Anybody, remember, anybody was listening? <laughs> I don't want to ask you if you remember. Anybody listening to the pastor, listen to our pastor. He preached on the house of prayer. Y'all remember that sermon, the house of prayer? And, and when Jesus entered into Jerusalem on Sunday, that was considered his triumphal entry. And the first thing he did, he did a couple of things. First thing he did was he looked at a fig tree and said, during this time of year, this tree should have some fruit, and it doesn't have fruit, so he cursed the fig tree. Then he went from the fig tree into the temple, and guess what he did in the temple? He cleansed it. That, that's, that, that's prophetic, because he said, listen, this time out for religiosity, it's time out for playing games. Y'all done turned it into a den of thieves. It should be a house of prayer. So he turned over the money changers' table because they was, you know, crooked as our get out. Trying to, and the reason, why, the reason why the money changers was there because when you had the pilgrimage of people coming from wherever they came from, they didn't have, let's say, Jerusalem. They, they didn't have, let's say, U.S. US dollars. So they had to get conversion. You know, where, wherever they were, they could have brought German dollars, Spanish dollars, but when they got to Jerusalem, the money changers was there so that they can exchange. And some people didn't have money. They brought animals. They, they, they exchanged something so that they could have something to sacrifice. But all of that was a show. So we can look the part and not be the part. <laughs> you know, and, and Deacon Crutcher, you know, I wish I would... Would, no, I don't want to say it that way. Thank the Holy Spirit. The Lord put that passage in Deacon Crutcher's uh, spirit to read to us because when you listen to it, it's not what goes on on the inside, uh, uh, not what comes out of us that, that, that what it, it is what comes out of us that makes us dirty. It's not what, what dirty stuff that goes on the inside that makes us dirty. And so a lot of times we get caught up in how things look. Now, now we, we ought to have discernment, amen? The Holy Spirit has given us discernment. We know what evil looked like. We have a sense by the agency of the Holy Spirit to be able to understand that that's not a good situation. Let's not go there. Or they talking about something that's not fruitful, not edifying. Let's not get involved, even though, you know, we put our little toe in the water of that conversation. Be like, oh, that's some good stuff. You know, it could be the latest gospel. What's going on? Be like, get your foot out the water and keep on going. <laughs> because the Lord don't want you to get tangled and twisted up into that type of conversation. And so the Holy Spirit gives us indications. He gives us signs that we ought to um, prayerfully be obedient about. 
So triumphal entry, he comes in on a Sunday. So Monday and Tuesday, he, uh, he does the, the cleaning, the teaching and the cleaning. Wednesday is considered a holy day. And this is also the day. So Wednesday was a day of rest uh, during that culture, during that time. But it was also the time where this dude named Judas, he was cutting a deal to betray Jesus. And I often ask the Lord sometimes, like, how many people y'all know named Judas? Y'all got any cousins named Judas? Junebug, is that what Judas? <laughs> is Junebug Judas? Or, 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 or you know, and we, we have sisters. Y'all know any Jezebels? How come we don't have any Jezebels uh, named children? Because <laughs> they're named Lexus. <laughs> and so it, it even Ichabod. Ichabod, a, a very least known name, but Ichabod is a name in the Old Testament where Eli was the priest, and when Eli died and the Ark of the Covenant was stolen, Ich uh, Eli's daughter-in-law named the baby as she was giving birth to the baby. She named the baby Ichabod, and as the Ark of the Covenant was being stolen, Ichabod's name means the glory has departed. So how prophetic and significant that that child's name, Ichabod, because as the Ark of the Covenant, the, the physical manifestation of, of God's presence in the earth to where the glory of God was no longer dwelling in Israel because they were not doing what they were supposed to do. Eli's children were sleeping around the temple with all the women. He wouldn't want to discipline them. And so the Lord said, okay. We'll take care of that. And there was a transition from Eli to Samuel. And so we can never, we never, we never, no matter how, how, how we think we're getting along, how far we think we're getting by, all the stuff we hear uh, in the news and around the world, people are not getting by. The Lord has a time and place for judgment to, to occur. And so what we, what we, what Sylvester needs to do and continue to do it say, vengeance is mine, say the Lord, because I want to see stuff happen right now. I want to see it. <laughs> but see, that's pride. That's, that's vanity. You know how you, somebody been picking on you and you want to see them go down, and then you walk up to them talking about nan, 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 nan. <laughs> that ain't, the Lord say, no, you don't have the right spirit for that. <laughs> you just keep being faithful. <laughs> you just keep serving the Lord, and uh, we'll take care of those things, and we'll hopefully get to some of those uh, psalms on tonight. So that happened on Wednesday. Judas betrayed Jesus. Then Thursday was the Last Supper. Jesus goes into the Garden of Gethsemane. And then it, it was a Friday. You know, it wasn't good for Jesus, but it was good for us. Uh, and then he, 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 he was crucified. He was crucified. You know, they, they couldn't kill him, but he allowed himself to be obedient unto death so that he can fulfill his greater mission, which, which is to redeem mankind back to the Lord. And I'm so glad he did. And so that was Good Friday. And then, you know, he was in the grave. We don't hear much talked about on Saturday, but, uh, you know, that's part of the three days Jesus was uh, resting, if you will, in the tomb. Uh, Peter says a little bit about that. And then on Sunday, Resurrection morning, <clears throat> we have Resurrection Sunday, in which Jesus rose from the dead. And there were some angels at the tomb saying, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is risen and is not here. So Holy Week, Holy Week. And, and, and as I say that, let, let, us, let, us, uh, let us continue to be prayerful about, uh, you know, what's going on in Baltimore with the bridge that collapsed. Did y'all see that on the news? Saw that on the news, the bridge collapsed. There was a freight, uh, cargo freight line that hit a bridge. Uh, I, I believe two people passed away. Uh, they found, they did find some in the water, but the heart just goes out. And then we pray for the ripple effect that comes after that because uh, finances are going to be impacted in some way uh, to repair that. And, and you know, uh, people blaming people already about how the bridge uh, uh, collapsed. The bridge collapsed because of cargo freight. It wasn't political. It was a ship hit the bridge. 
but they want to go all around about how it happened and whatnot. Let's just be prayerful. Let's people of God, let's just be prayerful. Let's be prayerful also about those who are going through bereavement. Um, I believe there was a funeral here today. Was there a funeral here today, this morning? I believe the Bone family. Uh, be in prayer with the Bone family and, and all others who are going through bereavement at this time. And so we have a lot indeed to pray for, and we want to keep those in mind as we go through our, our day to day. And so I thank God that um, he has everything in control. And we ought to be thankful that we don't have as much control as we think we have. But we know who has all the control and sovereignty of, of affairs and whatnot because sometimes it can get overwhelming and it may be difficult to keep up with so much, even in your own life, of what you got going on. So let's, let's be in prayer about uh, those who have uh, suffered loss, going through loss. Okay, I think I'm almost ready. <clears throat> okay, so we got a few things. Let's see, what do we have? Okay, we got some. Let's, let's start with uh, our icebreakers. Let's go to, let's go to, let's see. Let's go to, let's go, let's go to Psalm 150. Psalm 150. I'm going somewhere, believe it or not. <laughs> Psalm 150. You all there? Yeah, now, you know this interacting. I need y'all to holler back at me or, or say something. Don't just look at me uh, uh, unless I got something on my face or, you know, uh, you know, I need to clean off my face or whatnot. You know, don't just look at me. <clears throat> okay, so everybody at Psalm 150? Icebreaker question is, how many, how, many, how many psalms are there in psalms? 150. <laughs> Can't get anything past y'all. Okay, now, let's go back to the left, and let's look at, uh, let's go, now this is going to be kind of quick now. Let's go to uh, Psalm 42. Psalm 42. Psalm 42, I want everybody to, to, to get there. Psalm 42. Does yours say book two? Okay, so Psalm 41, that, that's the end of book one. All right, now, now, now you're at, you at uh, 42 now. Turn over to Psalm 73. Psalm 73. We don't have to put it on the screen yet. I, we, we just, we, I, we ice breaking. This helped me getting through my outline. You all at Psalm 73? All right, let's go to Psalm 90. Let's go to Psalm 90. Psalm 90. You all at Psalm 90? All right, let's, let's turn one more time. Let's go to Psalm 107. Psalms 107. Psalms 107, you all there? All right, so the icebreaker question is, how many sections or books are in the book of Psalms? Five. Anybody know why there's five? <laughs> she said, because it's a lot. <laughs> Anybody know why there's five? Okay, uh, what if, what if, what if, here's a clue. Why is there five books of Psalms in Psalms? Here's a, here's a hint. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. How many books are those? So is it by coincidence? No. So when they... When they, when the Lord put Psalms together, and book one is from one to 41. David wrote about 37 of those Psalms in book one. He wrote about 73 in all, but book one, David wrote about 37 or so of those Psalms. Book one really is all about man. Book two is Exodus, 
And so in view of Exodus, you have uh, redemption in mind. The beginning of a nation of Israel is in book two. So you'll read things like Zion and Jerusalem and sacrifices and offerings and covenant, things that are set, that set them apart as a unique nation, book two. So book three, what, what is the middle book of the first five books of Moses? Starts with an L. Come on now, I know you know your Bible. What is it? Somebody holler it out. Leviticus. So book three deals with the ceremonial law for restoring man to fellowship with God through the sacrificial system. So book three, 70, Psalms 73 and 89. Oh, by the way, Psalms don't have chapters. These are songs or songs that are set to music, accompanied to music. So it, 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 is, it is biblically accurate to say, let's turn to Psalm 23. Verses, let's, let's, verses, let's turn to Psalms chapter 23. Psalms is, is, is a song book. And um, book four is Numbers. Numbers deals with continued disobedience. Moses is book numbers. And so book four in Psalms, it parallels Israel's unfaithfulness. So in, all in book four, Psalms 90 through 106, you see the Israelites unfaithful. They can't keep it together. And, and that, ought to be, <clears throat> that ought to be a clarion call uh, for us today, knowing that if Israel, if, if you follow the Bible now, if you live by the Bible, if you have read the Bible, uh, well, we, get, we all read, we have actors who can act out the Bible, but if you apply the Bible to your life, the Holy Spirit is going to remind you about his faithfulness. And he's going to remind you about there were certain people who were unfaithful. And so if you know that being unfaithful gets you judged, then we ought to walk in forgiveness because we are redeemed people. And I thank God for time that he allows us to Ask for forgiveness. <clears throat> now, I'm not a TikToker. You know, I'm, I don't go on TikTok, I, but, but, but I, was, I was in my phone. Uh, I believe Brother Mac, you know, there was a concert on uh, Sunday. He, he sent me some pictures of our daughter. And uh, in order to, for me to get to the pictures, I had to open up Facebook. And it went to TikTok. <clears throat> And you know how you scroll through there's various stories? Well, there's one lady, and y'all may have seen this, the title of it was, She Was Not Ready. And so she tells this story. She's in church testifying how she was in a car accident, and the car flipped multiple times. She was in a small car, but a, a suburban-sized vehicle hit her T-boner, and she flipped multiple times. She was in the, passenger, in the driver's seat, and she tells a story that she knew she was going to die. As a car was flipping, she knew she was going to die. So she didn't pass out or anything, but as a car came to a stop, she started feeling her face because she knew she was going to be bleeding because glass was, was, was breaking everywhere. And so she heard voices asking her, are you okay, are you okay? And she said, yes. And so they get her out of the car. There's no scratch on her, but they have to take her to the hospital. So on the way between the accident and the hospital, she pleaded with the Lord in her single life, saying, Lord, you gave me another chance. I am going to do better. I knew it wasn't my time to die. So every time, every breath, every day you give me from here on out, I'm going to live for you with all of my heart. I mean, she set me on fire. I'm in tears. I'm like, who is this woman? <laughs> I'm in tears because the testimony was just so powerful to where she wasn't ready, but she recognized the fact that God was doing something in her life. 
And I'm the type of person, I don't need to be in a tragedy to understand that the Lord is at work. I like to learn from, you know, all the other stuff that going out there. I'm like, Lord, help me not to do that. <laughs> Jesus, forgive me. Even if I didn't do it wrong, I said, Lord, forgive me. I learned like that. Even as a child, I learned like that. But what she said, it just struck a chord in my heart about the seriousness of being faithful. She was going to church now. She was in Bible study. She was doing all the things church people do. But it got real for her in that car being T-boned by a suburban. And I tell you, when, when she said, Lord, I'm serious now, and the whole caption said she wasn't ready. The Lord knew she wasn't ready. So the things that, 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 that occur in our life, the Lord, in, 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 in his sovereignty, he knows. Because I struggle with that sometimes because how can you try to, how can, I don't want to say try, how can you serve the Lord and, 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 and you lose someone, uh, you lose your job, or, or, or you get caught up in a scandal, or you get this and you get that, and it wasn't necessarily something that you purposefully did. But the Lord caused these events to work together for your good and his glory. And so that's why when you think about numbers, they were just unfaithful. They, they, we don't care about this water no more. We want some meat. We don't want no meat anymore. We could have, we had it better in Egypt. I mean, no matter what they did. You remember them dudes from Korah? They tell my Moses, we don't like your leadership. I think we ought to have somebody that we're going to vote you. Moses said, okay, let me pray about this first. That's why, you, you know, no matter what come up on us, first thing we ought to do is go in prayer. Posture doesn't mean anything right now. You just go in prayer. Moses said, okay. Uh, the Lord said, let's meet tomorrow about noon. <laughs> and, and, and Korah and everybody who was behind Korah, the Bible says that the earth opened up on them. You think that was a testimony that day? You, you think anybody else had any issues with Moses' leadership that day? <laughs> You'd be like, my bad. <laughs> Go on back to my tent. <laughs> Y'all done got me caught up in something. <clears throat> But the faithfulness of God, he's, he's faithful. I have loved thee with an everlasting love, and with loving kindness have I drawn thee. That's not going nowhere. And we have to constantly remind ourselves. Constantly remind ourselves. You know, we, you, we cannot get too much of the Lord. That's the best way I can say it without fumbling over my words. Because sometimes I think I read this passage before. I done heard this song before. I done seen this verse before. I done been this before. I done been that before. Lord, but it's for your good. You need that. You, 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 you keep hearing it. You keep getting it until it get down on the inside of your spirit to where your reaction is, God bless you. Oh, you. You, you did, God bless you. As opposed to the other words we like to say. <laughs> I know y'all don't say it because, you know. So book four. Book five, Deuteronomy, explains the covenantal love. That's repetition of the law. And, and, you know, for years I've heard Deuteronomy as being called the second law. And the reason why it was called the second law is because of the Israelites in Numbers. Because uh, Moses doesn't, doesn't die, the Lord doesn't call Moses home until Deuteronomy, but in Numbers, it was that generation who was so unfaithful, the Lord said, okay, y'all going to die right here. How did he keep count of all of them people who died and you still got people being born in the wilderness? He knows. The Bible says every last one of those unfaithful, uh, disobedient, stiff-necked people, they died where they were. And the new generation crossed over into the promised land. And so when you hear Deuteronomy, it talks about repetition of the law. And so that relates to Psalms, book five, because it talks about God's unfailing love, his enduring love. And Psalms 146 to 150, which is the last four or five Psalms of that book, begins with praise the Lord, hallelujah. Hallelujah is the what? The highest praise, and our highest praise is our expression of love 
in response to God's love. Now, this, this, is, this is not a trick question. Can you praise the Lord silently? You believe you can, you can praise the Lord silently. Who believes that? You believe that? Got a hand back there? Got two, three hands back there? So let, let, let's clarify something. <clears throat> what is worship? You know how we, we put these words together, right? Praise and worship. So if praise means that you can praise him silently, then what do you do in worship? You praise the Lord. Yeah, you praise the Lord, but can you do that silently? Can you worship silently? Can you worship in your own way silently? Yeah, I'm going somewhere. I'm stepping on toes. So worship you could do that any kind of manner. Whether you sitting down, whether you waving your hand, whether you patting your, worshiping. Your spirit, you're not saying anything. But praise, when, when, when we talk about praise in the Bible, you have to open your mouth. You have to show some sign. Now, now I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't plan on this. The Lord had me thinking about this. And... Uh, Shabbat, listen at these words for praise. Pray, y'all tell me if any one of these are silent. Shabbat means to address in a loud tone, loud adoration, a shout, hallelujah. Barak means to kneel or bow, action. Yada means to worship with extended hand. Toda to give worship by the extension of the hand and adoration, same as yada, of what God has done or will be done. Taqwa, say taqwa. Taqwa means to <laughs> clap your hands. To heal her, not, not, not to kill her, but to heal her, to heal her means to sing. Hala or halal means to, to celebrate to make show, to boast. And kara means to dance. And so when we talk about praise the Lord, one thing we can't do silently is praise. Praise means to, with all of your being, say something, do something, be about giving. So, worship like that woman with the alabaster box, she broke it over Jesus' feet and she wiped, uh, well, one woman wiped uh, her, her, her tears with Jesus' feet. The, the other woman broke the alabaster box over Jesus to a, he's going to the cross to where they're, they're worshiping. That's a, that's, a, that's a sign of worship. So praise you can't be ashamed to praise the Lord. You can't be ashamed to praise the Lord. Now, you go worship the Lord in your cubicle. Now, depending on where you work, if you try to praise the Lord in your cubicle, uh, and you can, you can, <laughs> you, you, you can, but we want to, so when we come to church, we ought not be, we, are, we, we, we praise and worship. Praise and worship. And we do both. But praise, my point is, praise is not silent. We can worship in silence, but when it comes to praise, we have to open our mouths or we have to clap our hands or we have to pat our feet. We have to wave our hands. We have to extend our hands. That's praise. That's praise. And so that's what the Lord does in those last four or five psalms to uh, encourage us to praise the Lord for the great things he has done. All right, last icebreaker question here. Let's, uh, let's go to James 5 and 13. James 5 and 13. James 5 and 13. We there? 
James 5 and 13. All right, how should a married person behave? How should a married person behave according to James 5, 15, 5 13? How should a married person behave according to James 5, 13? Sing songs. So if you're happy, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. <laughs> if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, is that how the song go? <laughs> I don't know. Was that nursery rhyme? <laughs> Uh, all right, so that's good. Okay, I got two stories for you. I got two because the family did not laugh at one of them, so y'all blame them for hearing these twice. Prayer at sea. As the storm raised, the captain realized his ship was sinking fast. He called out, anyone here knows how to pray? A minister stepped forward and said, Captain, I know how to pray. Good, said the captain. You pray while the rest of us put on our life jackets because we're one short. And, and you know, Dig and Taylor, Dig and Taylor, my family, they, they like to analyze the jokes. <laughs> they like, well, can't they do both? <laughs> I tell you, okay. So that one didn't, that one didn't go over that well. But uh, here's the second one, okay. Uh, Dear John, I've been unable to sleep since I broke off our engagement. Won't you forgive and forget? Your absence is breaking my heart. I was a fool. Nobody could take your place. I love you. All my love, Jill. P.S. Congratulations on winning this week's lottery. She got better input, you know. Y'all been listening to this, you know what I mean? <laughs> all right, so we, 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 all of this is about songs, right? We had a little bit of everything. So who, who can, who believes they're a good communicator? Who in here believes they're a good communicator? Thank you, Brother Matt, come on up. Sister Lockhart, come on up. Uh, who in here is a good communicator? Sister Doris, you come on up, Sister Doris. Deacon Taylor, we got a, this is a family affair. Deacon Crusher, come on up. Come on up, come on up. Now, I'm, I'm going to give them a sheet of paper, and, and, and so here are the instructions. I'm going to give y'all a sheet of paper, and I want you all to share with the class what is this emotion. Because the book of Psalms deal with all emotions. And I asked the Lord, how can we do this in a way where we can get participation? And this is where we landed. And so I'm going to give them a sheet of paper. You can't say anything. Only thing you can do is act it out. Now, we may have to, if you, you want to keep your mask on? No, no, you can keep it on. No, keep it on. You're going to give me a word that I can do with my mask. Well, it's, it's about facial expression. They got to be able to see the emotion. But if you want to keep your mask on, I don't want to go against how you feel about that. You sure? Okay. So, so they're going to look at it and, you know, you give the facial expression as best you can. You can use your hands, your arms. Oh, wait a minute, let me get, let me, let me, uh, we need one more. We more. Come on, Sister Chandra. Come on, sister. am I saying that right? Shanda, that's right, no R in there. So you have to act this one out, okay? We, we, we have to see that facial expression so that we all as a class and I'm a student. I'm a student. Okay, so we're going to start with our left. So, sis, sis, Sister Doris, you come on up so at least we can get you in close. Just, just come right on up in front of the podium. And she's going to articulate what is on the card. And we have to guess what it is. You can't say anything. You can use your face, your arms, your hands. What is, what is she doing? Angry? Is that angry? Okay, good. Give her a hand. There you go. Thank you, ma'am. Just a pro at this. All right, Digging Taylor, you up next.
Sad, okay, sad. <laughs> Dean Taylor. Look, y'all the pros at this. Minister Mac, come on up, bro. You next. Okay, that, <laughs> that's good, that's good. Digger Crutcher. What emotion is that? Happy, okay, good, thank you, sir. All right, Sister Lockhart, you next. Word, look at that, worry. <laughs> y'all been reading y'all psalms, I see. <laughs> okay, wait a minute, do you think that's the hardest? How about this? The I'll, other, I'll try it. The other two are these. Oh. Okay. Lonely. <laughs> oh, look at that. Y'all give our contestants a hand, our members a hand. <clears throat> now, now the, the other one we didn't act out that's in Psalms is, is fear. Fear. <laughs> fear. And so if you hadn't realized it or not, <clears throat> Psalms is going to take us two weeks to get through, right? It's just the intro. So we're going we to, and, and, and the other part of it is, let's look at your outline now. Let's look at your outline. Go to the application. Go to the application of your outline. So, so worship... <clears throat> And we, we, we want to focus in on B and C. I'm going to read A. A says, worship involves the deepest responses of the human heart. One man said, a psalm a day keeps worry away. Devote time to meditating on the psalms daily. Okay, on the application B, which psalms have you prayed saying the most? And before we answer that question, because we're gonna, we want to read a couple of, of uh, one or two of them before we close on the night. We've got about 10 minutes, and uh, we want to wanna close out on. Yes. I'm looking at application. Okay, y'all got it? Okay. All right, you, 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 you had me. <laughs> Uh, there you go. We have it on the screen there. So for our online viewers, we're looking at B. Thank you, Brother Tobias. Uh, we we want you all to we want you all to participate in what your favorite psalm is because you know we we have our our popular psalms, but we have psalms that we rarely look at, we rarely read. But but as our members came up here to to, to try to show you the emotion, believe it or not, Psalms has every emotion you can imagine. That's why it's 150 of them. Scholars have said that Psalms is a compilation of a thousand years of compiling these Psalms because it started with Moses. Moses wrote a Psalm, Psalm 90, and the Psalms go all the way out past the post-exilic period into the days of Ezra. Y'all remember we had Ezra? We, we studied Ezra? Well, in cha Ezra chapter 7, you know, he was a, a student of the law. He knew the law in and out. But the Psalms, they, they, the Lord cut it off at that point. So the Psalms from 1450 B.C., before Christ, 
all the way through 450 BC. Four, yeah, 1450 BC to four, 450 BC is about a thousand years, about 900 or so years. Psalms consist of that period. So every imagine, every every emotion imagine is in the Psalms, and we want to read some of those Psalms, and we want to hear you read those Psalms because the Psalms are important to our our daily walk. And, and we have our outline, and we'll get through the outline, Lord willing, by next, uh, next week. If he, if he doesn't come back for us, we'll go through these because these are, are very critical to our uh, Christian discipleship because Psalms have promises and all those good things. Okay, so, so I want y'all to think about this. Look at C. Look at C. I don't want you all to be nervous. Consider writing a psalm for next week. Writing a psalm. Now, we're not adding to the Bible. I don't want you thinking that we, uh, you know, some, uh, you know, some splinter group that we going to, you know, add some stuff to the Bible. No, we ain't doing that. You already do that. How many of y'all pray? Believe it or not, you are praying a psalm. Do, do you ever start your prayer with, Lord, in heaven, most sovereign God, Lord, I bless you, praise your name, Jesus. Do you ever start out your prayer something like that? In the middle of, the, of your prayer, do you talk about what you really need? Lord, I need them folks to start bothering me. I need to get a relief for this. I need some money over here. I need this for the child. I need this for the wife. I need this for the family. I need this for the church. I need this for the job. Do y'all ever do y'all ever pray something like that in the middle? And then at the end, you say, Lord, I thank you. I'm not trying to be greedy, but I just want to say, Lord, this is your humble servant. I just want to thank you in Jesus' name. Y'all ever end y'all prayer something like, well, guess what y'all doing? Y'all are praying. Yeah, you doing that too? I'm, I'm getting happy. <laughs> and I pray like that. Lord, help me with these children. <laughs> ah, Lord, help us. Okay, so, so, so I, want, I want you all to consider. Now, if you look at Psalm 117, that is the shortest psalm in the Bible. It's two verses. Now, between now and next Wednesday, I want you all to consider. Use your outline. Keep your outline for next week. Because up at the top it says March 22nd, which is today, and April 3rd, Lord willing, if we come back next week. So we want to write a song, a short song, and, and, and we can share as the Lord gives us opportunity to. It, it's nothing to be, uh, we, we're just writing down a prayer. Because when you read these psalms, these are prayers uh, that, that as we see the types of psalms, that every emotion is imagined. All right, so I'm, let, me, let me read the first paragraph. So I want y'all to be thinking about a, a popular psalm, and we're going to read that tonight. Okay, the book of Psalms is perhaps a, the best love book in all the Bible. I'm on the outline first paragraph. The title Psalms comes from the Greek Salomai, and the Hebrew title comes from Tehillim, meaning song of praise, songs of praise. Our English word hallelujah comes from the Hebrew Bible. The Psalms are songs of prayer, praise, poetry, prophecy, and problems. It touches every human emotion, every experience, every yearning of the heart. I remember one time uh, in my single days, I got mad being single. Now, you know, I felt like I can't go to God with, with how I feel about being single, but you can. And he helped me through it. Every yearning of the heart and ushers us into the presence of an almighty God. The book of Psalms, the book of Psalms covers approximately, oh, there it is, 900 years of covenant experience with, with, uh, that's a typo there. It says with the God, but it should say with the Lord. I, I wanted to say the Lord. I, I like using the Lord, L O capital L O R D, uh, as opposed to God. God, the word God is Elohim. It's, it's, a, it's a creatorial name for God. Uh, that's his name when you talk about 
Genesis chapter 1, it says God. But when he makes man, Moses used not G-O-D, he used L-O-R-D, which, which shows God relation to man. So when you see capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D in your Bibles, that's a relational term. That's a covenantal term. And so Genesis chapter 2, we see that. And then we see how the enemy comes in and try to say, have God really said this? He doesn't say the Lord God. He says, have God said it? So he tries to switch the relationship that man has to say that you really by yourself because it's not the Lord God. It's just God. And there's many gods out here. You know, I saw one lady smoking a cigarette. She looked at it and said, this is my God. So there's many gods out there. So when you talk about God, what are you talking about? But when we talk about the Lord God, when we talk about Christ, we know who we're talking about. And so uh, these emotions. Okay, popular psalm. Somebody name a psalm. What's a, what's a popular psalm that we have out there that we, we go to all the time? Psalm 91? 156? Did you say 156? Okay, 156. And, and which one? 23. Now, which one we want to read tonight as we close out? You want to read all of them? <laughs> we can. I got time. I, you know, I don't, <laughs> don't want to abuse your time because, you know, like I'm, I'm, like a, I'm like a pig in slop when I'm up here. And I, that's probably not a good analogy to use, huh? Just <laughs> I'm sorry. Can y'all edit that out? Can y'all? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wallowing. I'm having a good time in the name of Jesus. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm getting too tickled. I'm getting too tickled. Okay, 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 okay. Do we want to read all of them? Or do we want to read? We got 91. 91. Okay, so we got, we got four songs we're going to read as we close out tonight. 91, 23, 150, and 6. And, and what was the fourth one? Psalm 100. Bro, Mac, you got 100. So we're going to read these songs, but we're going to pick this back up next week uh, with, with the outline. But this is just an introduction in the Psalms because it's just so much material uh, getting into the book of Psalms after coming out of Job because Job, he suffered, but then he, he, he was blessed with double. And he has a reason to praise, and we fall into song. The Lord wants us to, in all things, give him thanks, give him glory. Okay, so let's start reading. So if you could give us a psalm title. Is that the one you call? Yes, ma'am. Read all of it. Psalms 91 reads, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkest, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angel charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon, shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. That is Psalms 91 in its entirety. That's good. What's our next song? Is it, is it, is it 23 or 150 and 6? Okay, let's go with Psalm 150 and 6. Psalm 
Psalms 150 and 6. Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. What's our next one? Psalm 23. Let's go to Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. You know, we, we, we talked about that one with the children on Sunday. That, that's good. That's good. Ooh, that's a good one. Okay. <clears throat> Psalm, next one is it Psalm 100? Psalm 100, a psalm of praise. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen. Doesn't that just pump you up a little bit when you read the song? We have four. <clears throat> that's all we have. And that, that, that's okay if we do. So we want to we wanna pick this up next week with some more of this and go through the outline because the Psalms, as you study the Psalms, you know, some have categorized them in, into to buckets, if you will. Thanksgiving, confidence, uh, imprecatory, imprecatory, you know, uh, asking the Lord to rain down justice on enemies, uh, those are impre imprecatory psalms. You know, one preacher said it's a, it's a get them Lord psalm. <laughs> I don't know if you ever prayed a get them Lord psalm before. <laughs> I have, but, uh, uh, but, 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 but all of our emotions, all of our emotions, so that's the two takeaways we want you all to take away tonight. Number one is psalms is about every emotion imaginable. So we, we, we can't say as believers the Lord don't understand because we got 150 of them just in Psalms. And then number two, the takeaway is we want y'all to consider prayerfully writing out a, 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 a psalm between now and, and next, uh, next Wednesday that, that we can share. It doesn't have to be anything special. You know, this is your, your Psalm 151. Your Psalm 151, and again, and I'm not adding, we're not adding the scripture, we're not taking away from scripture, but we're just uh, uh, using it for the purpose of, uh, of sharing and hopefully edifying and encouraging uh, each other. It could be a psalm about the nation. You don't have to write a personal psalm. You could write about how, how the, the Lord is, is, is over the nations and whatnot. So there's, it could be about birds. So this is a book of poetry. But we'll pick back up next week. Uh, any, any, any closing comments before we close? Uh, Minister Mack, he prepared to close us out <coughs> in prayer. Uh, any, 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 any comments about Psalms so far? We want to get more into reading these Psalms next week. We want to try to read, you know, the goal is try to read all of these uh, Psalms on the outline as humanly possible. My prayer to the Lord about this particular block of, of, of teaching is like, Lord, how can we use the Psalms for our daily life? Because a lot of times when we hear scripture, it's in a setting where we hear scripture. Nothing wrong with that, but, 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 but we, are, we, are, we are people. Y'all heard of OJT, on the job training? I heard that in rabbinical uh, teaching, rabbinical teaching. Jesus was a rabbi. He's a great high priest now, but on the earth he was a rabbi. That the way the rabbis taught was that they would give you something and wouldn't explain how you're supposed to work it. It's up to you to work it. Does that make sense? You know, a lot of times I'm on my job, they tell me I want you to do something like this. I'm like, well, how I do it? 
they, they be like, figure it out. I'm like, well, how are you a good supervisor? You gonna tell me to figure it out? And you gave me something like this, and it's supposed to be due like in two days. You figure it out, so you come up with something. So, so and it's interesting, because I heard this last night. Rabbis teach that way. Elijah and Elisha gave him the mantle. He had to figure it out. And Elisha was, that, that, that was a bad dude in a good sense because he, he performed more miracles than Elijah because he figured it out with the help of the Lord. And so my prayer is, is like, Lord, we have Psalms. We have all of these emotions wrapped up in us. We have to apply these psalms to our life. That means that we have to figure it out. And part of figuring it out is we have to look through the psalms. We have to read through the psalms. If I say, if I say, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, is that in the psalms? Or is that something made up? That's in the psalms. So how do you taste the Lord? That means you, you, you go to where he is and you, 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 you have faith in him and you trust him. That's tasting of the Lord, that he is good. Encounter him. And so we want you all to have hands-on experience uh, in the Psalms. Not only, this goes beyond next week, we're talking about as a part of our routine to where, Lord, I'm feeling this way, or I need to, 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 to do this on my job, or I need to do this, I got this. What do you say about it? And it's not only with the Psalms, but it's the whole, uh, counsel of God's word in the Bible. Uh, that, that's where we always want to be at because we want to start with what does God say about it versus how we feel about it. And oh, by the way, feelings are different from emotions. Emotions are, are unconscious uh, reactions, whereas feelings are conscious reactions. You could be in a situation and you could feel a certain way about it versus an emotion. Something comes on you in, in this deep unconscious emotion reaction that comes out of it. That's an emotion. If I scare you, and you, 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 that's an emotion. But if I scare you and you do like this and you feel about it, you're like, he so was wrong doing that. I feel some kind of way about him. Feelings are, so these emotions that the psalmists are talking about, have written about, they're immense. They cover the, the whole spectrum. And we want to be more involved in that, and we'll pick that up next week. Okay, I'm going to hush. Uh, Mr. Matt, come on. He's going to pray us out. Hey, you all have been wonderful. Let us not forget our families who are in bereavement. Uh, also remember those who are on the sick and shut-in list. Uh, even those online, thank you all for participating. Hopefully we'll see you again, or at least you all will join us next week. And um, again, thank you all for listening, and thank you all for coming to our Wednesday night Bible study. Minister McDaddy. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you tonight, God, for your word. God, we thank you for the ability to learn, and it's only because of your spirit that dwells within us, that we will continue to hide your word in our heart, that we might not sin against thee. God, we thank you for the songs, God, and we just want to get all we can out of it, God, and apply it to our lives. Thank you for this teacher, preacher, for all these members that are here, those that are online. God bless all our sick and bereaved, God, those that are, God are in hospitals and convalescent homes or even in their homes, Lord. God, we ask you now to give us traveling grace as we go to our homes. Give us a peaceful night rest. That God, if it be thy will, we rise in the morning. God, we build about your, about your business as you give us new mercies. Give us sweet sleep in Jesus' name. Amen. amen.